Hi, welcome to the notes for 4-5. This one's titled, What if it is not a special angle? So today we're going to look at sine and cosine and tangent ratios when it's not one of our special angles on the unit circle. So this paragraph reads, in previous lessons, everything was based on our special right triangles. Today we will look at other trig ratios that may or may not be in the unit circle and that are not associated with one of our two special right triangle cases. So shown below is a point on the unit circle. It says prove that point P is on the circle. So how can we prove this? So you'll see point P is up here. Okay, so this is point P and it says that its X coordinate is negative 0.6 and its Y coordinate is 0.8. So they're trying to say, is that really a point on the unit circle? So one of the things that we talked about here in the previous lesson was when we had something that looked like this. When we had our sine squared theta plus our cosine squared theta, we said it always equaled one, as long as it was the same angle that we were dealing with, right? So we could think about that also, remember, in the form where if I have, you know, the sine of theta squared plus the cosine of theta squared equals one. So if I want to figure out, is this a legitimate point on our unit circle, remember, this is the cosine of theta, and this is the sine of theta. So the cosine of theta, we don't know what theta actually is, but we know the cosine of theta is this, and we know the sine of theta is that. So if I take my coordinates of my point and I plug them into this formula, if it makes it true, then that is a legitimate point on our circle. If it doesn't, then that point is not correct. So let's try that here. Okay, so, and you can do cosine or sine first, doesn't matter which one, but let's do this as negative 0 0.6 squared, right? That's our cosine of theta being squared plus our sine of theta being squared. So we're going to say 0 0.8 squared should equal 1. Well, negative 0 0.6 times negative 0 0.6 is going to give us 0 0.36. And then when I do 0 0.8 times 0 0.8, that's going to give me 0 0.64. And so when we add those together, we get 1. And since that makes that a true statement, we have just proven that this point P exists on our unit circle. Okay. If we would not have gotten a 1 on this side, if it would not have been true, then we could say that, that point does not exist on the unit circle. Now they're asking us to find the sine of theta. Well, again, right, um, maybe I went out of order here. I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing there at the beginning. But right, we already know that the sine of theta, right, the sine of theta is 0 0.8. It's not asking what theta is. It's asking what is the sine of theta. So we know that is 0 0.8. Our cosine of theta, right? Cosine of theta is negative 0 0.6. And then what about the tangent of theta? Well, remember, tangent of theta is equal to the sine of theta over the cosine of theta. So in this case, we could say that's like saying 0 0.8 over negative 0 0.6. Wow, that's such an ugly number there. Could we take that and simplify that down a little bit? Let's see. Okay, well, right, both of them have one decimal place there, so let's just get rid of those decimals. If I multiply the bottom times 10, actually, let me get rid of that little equal sign so I don't throw anybody off. Right. I'm going to multiply the bottom times 10 to move over my decimal point, but I also need to do that to the top. So what we're going to get here is a negative 8 over 6, which then should reduce to what, negative 4 over 3? And that would be our tangent, so negative 4 thirds. Okay, so 
Let's move on now to the next one. The relationships we found in the unit circle provide great tools for finding the exact value of trig functions, but it is not our only tool. Sometimes it will be convenient to think of using right triangles. Okay, so we need to think about, it. you already know how to use right triangles, so let's use them if we can. Letter A says, suppose you are given the cosine of theta equals four fifths. Draw a diagram that represents this. Okay, so it doesn't say to draw the unit circle. Okay, you could if you wanted to, but let's just draw a diagram. So if I have the cosine of theta is equal to four fifths, and I want to use a right triangle, let's just draw a right triangle that looks like this. Okay, you can kind of envision like maybe it was in the unit circle, but let's just call this theta. And remember with our SOHCAHTOA, our cosine is always equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So in this case here, we've got this ratio of four over five. So our adjacent over our hypotenuse. So I could say that this side is four and this side is five. Now we'd say this probably isn't in the unit circle right now because our hypotenuse is five instead of one, but we can always go back and you know make it proportional if we needed to. So we've created this diagram, right? And it says letter B it says use your diagram to find the value of the sine of theta. Okay, well. Right now, we know that, remember, the cosine of theta was equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so that would be like 4 over 5. And our sine, then, would be equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, and we just don't know what the opposite side is. Or do we, right? If our hypotenuse is 5 and our one leg is 4, we know that this is going to be a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. So we could calculate that or do the Pythagorean theorem to come up with it. Okay, so then that means here our sine of theta is going to equal the ratio of the opposite over the hypotenuse. So three fifths. And then the last part, and this is the part I hope you're paying attention to because some people get lost on this little part. If 3 pi over 2 is less than theta, and theta is less than 2 pi, how does that change our answer? So when you see a statement like this, right, this is just giving us an interval to look at. We're talking about everything on the unit circle from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. If you think about your unit circle, okay, I'll take it here, let's put it, all these in here, right, we know that down here at the bottom, this is where 3 pi over 2 is. Oops, let me undo that there. This would be 3 pi over 2 is right here. And we know that right here at the end is 2 pi. So they're saying that our angle has to fall somewhere in that region. Right? Our angle is going to fall somewhere in this region. Theta should be down there. So if theta is down there, Right, remember our sine of theta, right, we had, we had said was equal to three fifths. So that would have been somewhere in one of these top two quadrants. If we're down in the southern hemisphere down here, right, remember that our sine becomes negative down here. So in this case, right, if our angle is down here in that fourth quadrant, we know that the sine of theta would have to be the opposite of the three-fifths. It would have to be a negative three-fifths, and that would be our answer. So we already knew what the sine of theta was from the previous part, but when we change where that angle is located, remember, it's going to adjust whether it's positive or it's negative. In this case, this would make it negative. So let's take a peek here at one to try. And then you can try your homework problems and see how we do. It says, given the tangent of beta is equal to negative 5, and beta is between pi over 2 and pi, find the following. All right, so let's think about this here first of all. 
as, you know, using our right triangles. So we're talking about Sokotoa. If I was going to take this and draw this out, okay, first thing here, let's think about that interval. This interval is going to go from pi over 2 to pi. Okay, so we know that our angle falls in there. If we wanted to take it and draw that out, just kind of on a unit circle to have an idea. Okay, we've got pi over 2 is up here, and our pi is over here. That's telling us that our angle beta has a terminal side that ends up being somewhere up in here, right? So if we were drawing in beta here, let me use a different color there, right? If we're drawing in beta here, it's going to make a right triangle in that second quadrant, looks something like that. So let's take it here and let's just sketch a right triangle that looks something like that. We're going to say... Uh, right there that should do right I'm not drawing it to scale because I don't know how long everything is now it says if the tangent of beta is equal to negative 5 well that makes sense right because the only thing that's positive up here is the sine right because our coordinates should be negative comma positive in that second quadrant so if we're doing the tangent of beta equals negative 5 let's think about that for a moment tangent of beta is equal to right we always say that Tangent is going to equal our y over our x. And we know here that if we're going to have a negative 5, where does this negative belong? Does this negative belong with the 5, or does it belong with the 1? Which part of it makes it negative? Well, remember, right? our sine is always positive in the second quadrant, and our cosine is always negative. So we want this negative to come down with the 1. So we're going to think of it as a positive 5 over negative 1, even though it is negative 5. And now we can label the sides of this triangle, right? We can say here that the sine is 5, and our cosine down here is going to be negative 1. Well, I guess that wouldn't be our total cosine, right? Because our this isn't the unit circle, but our opposite side of our angle would be 5, and our adjacent side would be negative 1. Okay, hopefully that explains that part of it better. Okay, we still don't know what the hypotenuse is, so we need to find that. So let's go ahead there and figure out what the length of C is, or our hypotenuse. All right, and let's just use our Pythagorean theorem. We'd say 5 squared plus negative 1 squared is going to equal C squared. That's 25 plus 1 equals c squared, and then 25 plus 1 is 26. So let me take our square root here. We're going to get that c is going to equal the square root of 26. Okay, so what does that do for us? Well, let's see here. If I take this now and I'm looking for what my sine of actual beta is going to be, all right, we'll call that beta. I wrote theta, I'm sorry. Okay, so that means that it's going to end up being the opposite over the hypotenuse. So we're going to say here 5 over the square root of 26. And I'll tell you what, you don't even have to worry about rationalizing the denominator right now. Okay, if you wanted to, we could. We could multiply the top and bottom by radical 26, right? That would give us you know, 5 radical 26 over 26, but I'm not going to have you worry about that. I just want you to worry about, do you understand where things are coming from? Okay, and then our cosine value, when we try to find it, remember, is going to equal our adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So we're going to say here, in this case, it would be a negative 1 over the square root of 26. So that would be our cosine of beta. Okay, so... That would be our answers for this problem. Okay, so the key thing here is making sure that you understand what these intervals mean, right? It's going to tell you where the terminal side of the angle is, and then it'll give you some other information. You just need to decipher what is that actually telling you about that right triangle. All right, so 
This is the notes for section 4-5. If you have additional questions or need some extra practice, please reach out and I will provide that for you. Thanks for watching.